Hi Cancer, Rosemary from Rosemary Astrology and welcome to your December 2022 astrology. Well, I think the most interesting aspect almost, although there is a lot going on here this month, um, is this opposition between the Sun and Mars in your 12th house. Now, your 12th house is the house um, where we go when we want to get quiet, when we want to get in touch with ourselves, when we want to look inwards. And it is anything related to that. So, you know, therapy, tarot, um, meditation, or whatever other practice you have to look inwards and really, you know, do some soul caring, some soul searching, and, you know, find um, you know, the true answers, you know, things that aren't distorted or blurred by what other people are telling you or by, you know, what you're hearing and really getting in touch with yourself. Now, this isn't Mars's most comfortable place because Mars is, you know, individualistic and focused and has drive and there's something blurry and otherworldly about the 12th house. Of course, obviously, because it relates to Pisces, which is a water sign. So, um, but Mars nevertheless, you know, is pushing you to do the work in that area. The sun is in the sixth house of job, workplace, co-workers, daily duties, responsibilities. Even if you're not in paid employment, this can be, you know, your responsibilities, other jobs and duties you have to fulfill. Um, it can even relate to an academic career. So perhaps, you know, some form of learning you're doing. And there's going to be a, a push and pull here as with any opposition, you know, feeling you have to, you know, choose between one or the other, or where do you find balance between the two? Mars is going to, you know, being the god of war, make you particularly adamant about the time or the um, efforts or the practices you want to do in relation to 12th house matters. But just remember, Mars is retrograde and the energy is skewed. And Mars is picking up speed retrograde. He went retrograde on the 31st of October, has been all of November, and now is moving backwards really fast with his retrograde. So, you know, if you do take action, it might come to nothing or it might be, um, you know, skewed or off target, you know, in, in terms of um, making a decision or taking a stand or Mars very much wants to take a stand or, or fight for something um, in relation to this opposition. It will also feel a little off in terms of whatever 12th house work you've been doing. So, you know, this is definitely the time to reevaluate fine-tune, see what's working for you in terms of these 12th house practices and be ready to go ahead when Mars turns direct in January. But as I said, a full moon here on the 7th, triggering even um, heightened, more heightened emotion in this area. And I always say, you know, give yourself a few days before and after easily from the 4th to the 10th. Um, some people will take it even a bit wider from the 2nd to the 12th. And remember, this heightened emotion is conjunct Mars. Um, the moon and Mars will be very close together on the 7th and conjunct on the 8th. So, you know, those dates, of course, we have these two together. So we have a, a warrior with drive who is getting over emotional. That's not a good combination. Plus, he's moving backwards. So that's not a good combination. And there's going to be the sun opposing all this, opposing Mars um, from the 6th to the 9th. And of course, in the middle of that on the 7th with the full moon. So, um, you know, just ride, you know, literally in my notes, I wrote, ride this energy very carefully. Don't try to avoid outbursts or, as I said, taking a stand, you know, that's a very Mars thing, um, you know, making brash decisions, standing up for what's right. You could probably, you know, maybe offend some people, step on some toes, and as I said, will come to nothing or will be misguided with that retrograde energy. Speaking of the sun, after um, the sun opposes Mars and, of course, the moon on the full moon, the sun will be squaring Neptune from the 12th to the 16th. Neptune is in your ninth house of, you know, higher learning, long distance travel, things related to philosophy and legal matters. Neptune brings a lot of blur. So you have been probably trying to, you know, reestablish the ninth house is also, you know, foreigners and foreign travel, long distance travel. We also say travel in the mind. So it's whatever is different from us. In the ninth house, we want to explore, you know, our views on life, our philosophy on life, uh, very much related to, as I said, you know, higher learning in terms of mind expansion, in terms of gaining wisdom. So it has been blurring that, right? It has been, um, 
bringing a, a lack of clarity to that and you've probably felt in different cycles this this struggle to have clarity in that area neptune also tends to make us over over compassionate compassion is you know a wonderful thing with neptune though neptune brings an ideal so you know perhaps your idea of um you know what life is all about type of thing has been has had the shade of a lot of compassion to it you know is it all about helping others obviously it is but neptune as i said can have us overreaching and i'll link my neptune video below about you know how neptune sometimes makes us over compassionate and self-sacrificing so the sun is going to bring focus to that in a chafing you know squaring off kind of way and it's going to have a play with you feeling you know you really have to get to the bottom of things the sun shines light and neptune brings fog so you know it's like putting on the high beams on your car when you're driving in the fog things just get you just get whiter and brighter fog you can't really see any better and you know also with the sun's aspect there in terms of you know where do i fit in what's my individuality and neptune as I said, you know, blurring this and the emphasis being on trying to dispel this fog or dispel this blur. The sun is also going to square Jupiter from the 19th to the 24th. So as the sun on the 21st moves into your seventh house, and we'll talk about all these guys hanging out in the seventh house. Does that even all fit? Yes, it does. Neptune on, uh, sorry, Jupiter on the 20th is gonna move from Pisces into Aries. Now a quick note, Jupiter spends one year in each sign. Um, it is been, he's been doing it in like six month stints. So Jupiter, if you can think back, was in Aries in your 10th house of success, uh, career success or wherever you want to be successful, wherever you want to be recognized or, or do well or succeed. Was there May, mid-May, June, July, um, went retrograde, but was still there August, September, October, then moved back into Pisces. So whatever you started here, whatever you used Jupiter's beneficial energy for, remember Jupiter brings opportunities and solutions, also wants us to learn and level up. Um, Jupiter is related to the ninth house in Sagittarius. So Jupiter wants us to, you know, also gain this wisdom in a more general way in terms of success. It can also be your, you know, your career if you are in paid employment and you know you consider your job your career. So Jupiter, as he moves into Aries, will be finishing that stay in Aries until May of 2023. So whatever you want to do in terms of 10th house pursuit, you have Jupiter there, which is very, very beneficial. But on the dates I mentioned, the 19th to the 24th, as he moves into the very beginning of Aries, he will be squaring the sun that is moving into your seventh house of committed relationships. Again, this chafing energy between partnerships, relationships, and where you want success. We often think of a committed romantic partnership, um, you know, our, our spouse, or, um, you know, if you're not married, a, a committed partner. It is not, you know more casual romantic relationships of the, of the fifth is where you are committed. It's also business partners. It's also, um, you know, rivals. It's the house of enemies. In ancient astrology, it was the house of enemies. I always say it can be people simply just not working in your best interest. And it is squaring where you want success. So there is perhaps a chafing between your career and your commitments to a partnership, or, you know, you are really feeling this chafing between a um, work work competition or a work rival and where you want to be successful in that area you know even in a business partnership it can be you know you driving for more success on your own maybe wanting a bigger um, percentage of your partnership or maybe your partner being you know more your business partner being more hesitant and you really wanting to take it you know to the next level those are all possibilities but there will be that squaring off and that feeling of chafing again between the sun and jupiter on the other hand, this dynamic, because this is also a super dynamic energy, so it can make things too big. Remember, Jupiter is a gas giant and the sun is a big flaming ball of gas. So this can blow things up too much. You can be feeling um, um, as if you're able to take on too much. This can be a big you know, balloon of hot air that you fail to ground in reality. Now let's talk a little bit back to the beginning of the month because we were talking about um, 
the seventh house again venus mercury and venus will move into your seventh house at the beginning of the month so preceding the sun on the sixth and the ninth venus and mercury are a wonderful combination together so you will be thinking more and talking more about seventh house matters maybe you want to take a partnership to the next level maybe you are thinking of marriage or you know moving in together something more committed you are talking about that. Venus will make your communications very sweet, very harmonious. We have the planet of uh, romance, of love, of beauty in the house of committed partnerships. So, you know, definitely if you are in a romantic relationship, this is a great time to take it to the next level or, you know, simply intensify things. You know, with Venus there, maybe you are recommitting, maybe you are putting more time and energy into that relationship. Maybe, you know, it is deepening even more. You are certainly going to be thinking and talking about it, and whatever you do communicate will be filled with that, you know, diplomatic, uh, sweet Venus energy, because Venus does want us to enter into relationships with others. And even if it's a partnership, a business partnership, you know, perhaps it is Working only with that, um, you know, service provider or that business partner in whatever you um, are venturing in. And of course, you know, this will be at the start of the month and then the sun will come in on the 21st and add even more emphasis to that. But also remember, will, you know, square Jupiter. So that can even go a little bit over the top. Now, at the end of the month, Mercury is going to go retrograde at the very, very end of the month. So, you know, the usual warnings, um, don't buy ground transportation, don't buy any technological devices. Um, you know, things will begin to move backwards, confusion with communications will be muddled even you know the our thought process can tend to be muddled so you know do wrap up whatever you want to do before mercury goes retrograde and remember the closer we get to that end of the month the more mercury begins to slow down use that energy as it starts at the beginning of the month and then do remember it will begin to diminish at the end as mercury really grinds to a stop and begins moving backwards but having said that at the end of the month mercury and venus will also conjunct Pluto and Pluto has been in your seventh house for many, many years. Remember, Pluto is about death and rebirth. Pluto is also about power and control. There's a very deep transformative energy with Pluto. So perhaps what you think about relationships in general has changed or about partnerships in general has completely changed. Maybe you've started over in you know a different relationship or maybe your view has completely changed been changed and started over these long cycles you know a planet that spends many years in each sign in each house are um, triggered in other smaller cycles so whenever something comes through your first house of course i can't see everybody's individual chart but this is very much you your individuality and it plays off of our seventh house who we are obviously affects our relationships and how our relationships develop and progress affect who we are so, you know, do know this comes in cycles and at the end of the month when Mercury and Venus conjunct Pluto, it's going, you're going to have a feeling of um, increased intensity and power and control issues can crop up. Maybe you want more power and control in a partnership. Remember, this is also, you know, competition and the rival. So maybe you'll have a more powerful or forceful way of uh, taking on those, those issues. Venus takes on the tint a little bit of whatever planet she is conjunct or um, whatever sign she is in. So conjunct Pluto, this is, you know, um, sweetness, uh, romance, wanting to enter into relationships with others, um, you know, the planet of love and beauty, but with, with a plan, with a bit of uh, intensity, you know, wanting to, to have that feeling of being, being the one in the driver's seat. With Mercury there, your communications can become very intense. You want to have some influence. I get the feeling there's really something you're going to be driving at. And without making it sound negative, because it's okay to have, you know, intensity and influence, you're really going to, uh, you know, turn up the volume or up the intensity in going after whatever you want, especially when the sun swings in there and brings focus to that. And, you know, I was talking about Venus's influence or being influenced. Capricorn is a very is an earth sign so very practical very down to earth capricorn also relates to the 10th house so it is a sign that wants success it wants capricorn likes hierarchy and likes to you know climb that ladder it, it likes levels so 
you, I get the feeling, are definitely driving at exceeding to a next level in terms, as I said, of a committed partnership or a business partnership. It is really, there's clear progress or you are driving at clear progress in that area. And just on a final note, Jupiter has been sitting in your eighth house of wealth and revenue you benefit through others. So again, a business partner, a romantic partner, it's also a bank loan, a mortgage. It can be a, a bursary, a scholarship, a, a research grant. And Saturn has been sitting there for about two and a half years. And I'm saying this because Saturn will change signs in 2023. And the eighth house is also money through wills and legacies. So, you know, Saturn has brought structure to that. Perhaps you have felt delays. Perhaps it's been hard going to get financing for something, or it has been, you know, difficult discussions about money from a partner. The dividing up of wealth with a business partner have been arduous or it's been long. It's required a lot of structure and a lot of work. Saturn really wants us to do the work, wants us to become knowledgeable, uh, brings structure, but also brings delays and brings a certain heaviness. As he leaves in 2023, he'll be leaving your eighth house. This is getting the feeling of, you know, things are wrapping up. And so do pay attention of having a structure in place because Saturn wants us to do that. And Saturn rewards us usually as he leaves a sign. So just know that you have a few months left of perhaps you're feeling, you know, intensity and heaviness, but also of having to complete the work and, you know, getting um, whatever, whatever work, whatever structure Saturn wants you to have in place. And then you will be able to reap the rewards of that before Saturn changes signs in 2023. So Cancer, this is everything I wanted to tell you. And just remember, you know, we're looking at the chart from especially the 21st on and going into January. If you feel everything that's going on is in relation to someone else or, you know, something everyone else can see or everyone else seems to be giving you an opinion on, that's not your imagination. You have everything happening in the top of the chart where it is, as I said, visible and in relationship to others, even this 12th house Whatever transformation is going on here, if you want to keep it private, do make the effort to do so because it is also above the horizon. So people might see that even if you don't talk about it, um, people can uh, perhaps perceive what's going on here. So have a wonderful month of December, Cancer. Don't forget to like if you liked, subscribe and share this with someone else you think might find it interesting. I will see you in the next video. Take care, lovely Cancer. Love you. Bye.